Welcome to DP Deconstruct. My name is Aaron Morgan. Recently, we put out a video about how to convert log footage to a Rec. 709 color space using Premiere Pro. Since then, we've got a lot of questions about how to do the same thing only using DaVinci Resolve. So today is all about two ways to convert your log footage to Rec. 709 using DaVinci Resolve. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than the video we did covering Premiere Pro simply because Premiere Pro is pretty straightforward. You add the LUT to the log footage, it converts for X709, and then Lumetri is kind of limited on what you can do after that. DaVinci is geared more toward color grading and there's a little bit more that goes on in the background. So I just want to go a little more in depth on what's happening so that you guys have a better understanding. Now, like I said, there's two ways that you can do this. There's a color managed, pro, or a color managed workflow and then there's a, a color space transform or CST workflow. And I'm gonna show you guys both ways, but for both of them, it is important still, just like with Premiere, you need to know what color space and what profile you're shooting in. So I know that the footage that I'm using today was shot with a Sony FX6. So I used the S Gamut 3 dot Cine color space and I shot with the S Log 3 profile. That's very important to know before you get started doing any kind of a color managed workflow using DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and jump in and let's get started. All right guys, so this footage was shot on the Sony FX6, like I said, in S Gamut 3 dot Cine. I was on a content trip for a waterfowl outfitter and it's for a film that's coming out soon. So the first thing I wanna do guys is I wanna go ahead and cover the color managed workflow. Now, when would you wanna use a color managed workflow over the other option, which is color space transform? So where I would say that I would wanna use a color managed workflow is if I had multiple cameras and I wasn't going to go heavy on the grade. If, if it was more of just get it set to where it's in Rec. 709, maybe do a little bit of light shaping and then deliver because there's not much budget, a color managed workflow would be a good option, okay? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and on the bottom right of the screen and there's a little gear icon, I'm going to click this gear icon and then I'm going to go to the color management tab. In the color management tab on this top little section here, you're going to see color space and transforms. And then you're gonna have color science. I'm gonna click that drop down menu. I'm gonna to go to a DaVinci YRGB color managed. Once I click that, the section kind of changes a little bit. You're gonna see that there's a, there's a checkbox that's checked. It says automatic color management and the color processing mode is now standard dynamic range. The output color space is also standard dynamic range Rec. 709. That works for me, everything's perfect. We're gonna hit save. And when I hit save, you're gonna see the footage automatically now change to Rec. 709. If I update these thumbnails, you'll see that all of them now are in Rec. 709 and they're no longer in that log format. So DaVinci has automatically seen that the color space coming in was S Gamut 3 dot Cine and I was in S Log 3. So, and it's converted that to a Rec. 709. Now, let's say that I had multiple cameras. Let's say I had a uh, Sony and a Canon. And the Sony, for some reason, DaVinci did not see that I was shooting in S Gamut 3 dot Cine and I was shooting in an S Log 3. So I need to manually input that information. To do that, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna group all the, together what, what files I have. So I'll, I'll group all my Sony, um, all my Sony files from the same camera. I'll right click and I'll come here to input color space. Once I, once I hover over input color space, there's another menu that pops up with all these different color spaces and profiles as options, okay? So I'm gonna find the color space and the profile that I was shooting in, which was S Gamut 3 dot Cine, S Log 3, and I'm gonna click that. And now DaVinci knows what camera and what settings, what input space I was in so that it can correctly convert it to, to Rec. 709. All right, so color manage is a great option if your priority is a quick turnaround. If you really wanna turn and burn that project because you know a tight budget or you have to deliver like the next week or whatever, and you wanna be able to just drag your footage on to the timeline, already be in Rec. 709, maybe make a few slight tweaks if needed in the color page and then deliver it and get it to client. Now, Matt and I, we prefer to edit with a color space transform workflow. And the reason why is there's degradation that happens when you're bringing it into the timeline already in a Rec. 709 color space. And we'll get more into depth with this in a later video, but with color space transform, you can take, you can be in control of where that conversion from log 
to Rec 709 happens in the node tree. Uh, like I said, we'll get more into that in a later video. It's not for today's video. But what this does is it allows us to have more information throughout the entirety of our color grading workflow so that when we have it to, to, to delivery, we're able to get as much out of that footage as possible. So Matt and I, we like to you to work in that color space transform workflow. So let's, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back down here to this gear icon on the bottom right. I'm gonna click that. And in that color space and transform section of the color management tab, I'm going to click DaVinci YRGB instead of color manager. I'm just going to go to DaVinci YRGB. And then uh, you also have your timeline color space and your output color space. Now, again, without getting too much into detail, when you're talking color space, there's Rec 709, then you have Rec 2020, your BT 2020, and then DaVinci has this new color space called Wide Gamut uh, DaVinci wide gamut slash intermediate. That's a much bigger color space than Rec 709. So we want to be able to work our timeline in that big color space. And then we'll deliver in Rec 709 gamut 2.4. All right. So that's our output color space. Now I'm going to click save and you'll see that all this footage now is back in log. So how do I get my footage from a log into a uh, Rec 709 workflow? So one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple nodes. And on this last node of, of my timeline, I'm gonna take this color space transform in my effects tab. So you'll open up your effects tab and then I'll get it off my favorites. I'll go to show all. You're gonna come down to resolve FX color, <clears throat> color space transform, and you're just gonna drag and drop. Now. Uh, you're going to come into input color space. So what is the camera that you're shooting in? This is not going to automatically read what camera you're in anymore. So you have to manually come in here and say which camera or which profile, which color space you were shooting in. So I, my input color space was sgamut3.cine. My input gamma was slog3. So I'm going to come down here to slog3, click that. <clears throat> now my output color space, you can set your timeline up to where it reads Rec 709 2.4. I like to personally come in here and just change it to, that way I know it's, it's a good practice. So Rec 709, and I'm gonna go to Gamma 2.4. And now I am in that correct Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 color space from log. And that conversion's happening in this node at the end of my node tree. So from here, I can make any changes I want, whether it be exposure or if I want to come and do some balance work, I can, you know, take out some reds, take out some greens, whatever I want to do, have my, all my workflow be in this region right here of these four nodes. And then it's going to convert to that Rec 709 and then I can come and deliver. Okay guys, so that's both ways that you can convert your log footage to a Rec 709 color space using DaVinci Resolve. Now, again, why is this even important? Why not just shoot in Rec 709? And it's kind of like what I was talking about with Color Space Transform versus Color Manage. I always want to shoot in, in a log profile in camera. That way I can capture as much information as possible in camera and then use my post-production, my editing suite, my editing software to be able to tweak how much, how much that information, how much do I want my highlights to, to be elevated? How much do I want information do I want to keep in my shadows? I would rather have that information to work with and to be able to tweak myself in post than to lose it and have it burnt in my camera without having all that information. If you guys have any more questions, be sure to hit us up. Thanks for watching.